Hi and welcome to this DVD which is hopefully going to help improve your knowledge of figure sculpting and anatomy. To start off let's take a look at the finished sculpt which you'll see being constructed over the next few hours. As you can see I've gone for something a little different than is usual for a, an anatomy tutorial such as perhaps a, a generic symmetrical stance pose man. Um, while that sort of figure can be a useful teaching aid it's also rather boring and artistically flat so I've decided to go with something rather more dynamic to show how anatomy knowledge is used to solve problems in the real world rather than just depicting it in a cold technical example. I decided to do this sculpt in a somewhat classical stylization which depicts more clearly the forms and masses that the body is built from. I'm using Mudbox as my main tool on this DVD though it really doesn't matter which sculpting tool you use whether it's the dedicated sculpting environments of Mudbox and ZBrush or the built-in sculpting capability of apps like Modo, Blender or Silo. The techniques involved and the tools these apps have are all pretty much identical. I'm going to leave all the panels on the interface visible for the duration of this sculpting so you can see exactly which brushes I'm using at any time and also the brush settings and falloffs. Um, that way I don't have to keep referring to what tool I'm using. This is not a technical tutorial about how to use Mudbox, since it's an extremely simple app and you don't need to know any advanced techniques or secret tips to produce a sculpt like this. I generally only use uh, about six brushes anyway. Um, add, subtract, smooth, flatten, bulge and pinch. These are standard brushes which you'll find in any app that has even got basic sculpting capabilities. The base meshes I build in Lightwave, but again the specific app you use is irrelevant since you can do the same in any 3D app with even the most basic modeling capability. You can see how simple this mesh is. The only real rule to remember is to try and keep it as much as possible to nice clean even squares like this. Um, this makes the sculpting go smoothly. Even squashing the quads into flat rectangles like this will cause ugly sculpting anomalies. I keep the face very simple as well. Uh, some sculptors will model a lot more detail into the base mesh on the face, but as long as you keep nice even squares, it doesn't really matter. Um, I construct the mesh in a stance pose and then pose it by simply grabbing selections of polys or verts and rotating them into a pose. If you were building uh, more of an all-purpose base mesh that you intended to use for many future sculpts, then it would be worthwhile skinning and rigging it so you could more easily pose it but I built this mesh specifically for this and I won't be using it again so quickly posing it like this is fine. I've already pre-sculpted this piece to work out exactly what I wanted to do with it. It's a reasonably complex piece and doing it on the fly while recording this would take too long so I pre-sculpted it and I can now use the level 1 meshes to re-sculpt it for the DVD in a more reasonable amount of time. Clearly, even though this is still a low-res mesh, it does have a reasonable amount of structure to it left over from when I pre-sculpted the figures. Uh, this will help to speed things up and I'll be providing these meshes so you can start from the same point. Um, it might be usual at this point to start talking about standard proportions of the human body. Uh, you think of da Vinci's famous drawing of how the human figure fits into a circle and square, though in reality he cheated to make that fit. Um, I think it's misleading to distill organic structures down to geometric or mathematical proportions or into systems of dividing the body into 10 or 12 equal sections etc. You've all seen that sort of stuff in drawing books I'm sure. Um, the reality is that there's a massive variety of very different body shapes and proportions in the real world and the best way to work out the proportions of the character you want to make is by finding some reference of a person that's closest to what you have in mind and using that as your start point. So I recommend a site like 3D SK where they have all sorts of body types from dwarves to bodybuilders and from anorexics to obese people. Study these different body types, uh, use them as reference and never get into a mindset of trying to fit your model into some perfect average body type because it just doesn't exist. The only time that's necessary is when making a tutorial like this one where I obviously have to make a reasonably average generic model in order to illustrate certain things and I can't give it too much individual character or odd proportions. But I doubt you'll ever have to make this sort of average model because in the end it's the differences between people that are interesting, not the similarities. <laughs> 